Okay, now here's the fun part. Let's add some control. You'll notice if you expand the System Manager uh, window, we will have the Aspen 1624 at address 192.168.1.200 and all of the commands that have these little gear icons and then all of the feedback that needs to be processed coming back from the box. So let's take a look at one. This particular one called init inputs 1 through 4, this command simply runs a macro on the Aspen device uh, and it happens to be number 37 is the macro of the 256 macros that are available. So the command values just run 37 uh, backslash and uh, the hex value OD is for a carriage return. And we simply call the command input in it inputs 1 through 4 and in the background the command value is, is this. We've already provided the macro file which you have uploaded to the Aspen box so now all of these things will happen automagically. So let's click OK. Now what this macro does is it updates the entire panel so as soon as you launch command fusion and it makes a connection what we want to have happen is I want to know what the values of inputs 1 through 4 are so these text boxes will be populated. I want to know what the mute value is, the phantom power and phase invert and also I want to be able to control the fader. I want the fader to move to the appro appropriate location based on where it's at within negative 10 to plus 60. And then we have real-time feedback from the box, not something that's simulated. So since this is already written for you, what we can do is go to the system. You'll get a dialog box and one of the things that you can do is have a startup command. Well let's set our startup command to and it inputs 1 through 4. Let's click OK. And now if you want to try, you can upload this and you should see immediately as soon as you go to Command Fusion, everything should populate based on the values of your box. Now if you have uh, no gain values and you have no mute values, uh, everything's just going to come up at the bottom like it did normally. So you might want to um, try changing that within the Aspen device. And uh, once you do that, uh, then when you connect again, you'll see an update. Okay, so let's have another look here in System Manager and let's look at a couple of commands. For instance, let's look at Input Mute. Input Mute is simply sending the command and we'll get into the code aspect of this later on. But uh, once again, command name is Input Mute 1 and we're sending a verbose command, uh, Input Mute Toggle of channel number 1 and this is an Aspen command and notice it's prepended with an exclamation point which means we want it to be a verbose command and it's followed by a carriage return. So this doesn't, I don't know what the toggle state of the box is but I do know that I want it to be the opposite when I press the button. And so now it doesn't matter what the state is, it will change to the opposite state with this input mute toggle command and then give me feedback, verbose feedback that I can parse. So Let's look at the sister command of that, or the associated feedback, and that would be the mute in one status. Now if we look at the input mute status, you'll notice it has a feedback name that we can uh, more easily associate than the actual uh, regular expression command. And this is what's getting parsed, and we'll get more into this in, in other videos. But I'm looking for input mute, and these are escape characters because everything that's evaluated happens to be within um, these parentheses. So what I want to have happen is let's not evaluate those. I only want to know is it a 0 or is it a 1. And then based on that, if it is a 1, um, then I want to uh, affect join value number 10 if the value is 1 and tell it to change its state. If it's a 0, I want it to affect join value 10 and uh, change it to the off state. And that allows it to automatically change those two nice graphics that we brought in uh, between the mute off and mute on. Now everything's provided for you. So for those of you who don't really care about coding anything, uh, you've already uploaded the macro file and you have all of the back end written for you. So all we have to do is associate that now. So let's do one of them and uh, you'll see how easy it is. 
Uh, first thing you probably noticed is that um, these were just a little bit off center. So I'm going to center them. And uh, you can put them wherever you like. I just noted, noticed when I uploaded it was off to the left and I wanted to have them a little bit more centered. And what's nice about these particular text fields is that they are updated automatically. Uh, join number 22 is going to update their particular gain value. So they get updated uh, in the input gain one status. And you'll notice that um, if we look, serial join number 19 is affected. And uh, it just parses any input gain value that's coming in for channel number one and updates this text value, which is 19. There's the association that you're probably wondering about. Okay. So now what we can do is we go to the mute button and let's double click it. We'll get a button properties box. Now we've done all these other things. Let's go to basic actions. And I'm going to turn feedback, simulated feedback off because now I want real feedback from the box. I don't want just something uh, pretty on the stage. However, you could leave this on if you wanted to have a nice demo mode. Uh, you could simulate the feedback and you can put it into a toggle mode like we have now or you can get real-time feedback so really easy to change. For our command, let's select input mute number one. And now whenever I press this button, it'll send off that command. The command will be sent to the box, it will change the mute state, the box will respond, and the feedback will parse the command coming back and update your button appropriately to show you the state of the box. So that's all there is to that. So for phantom power, press command. We want to use the phantom power one toggle. And also notice that it prepends the system that you were talking to, which is the Aspen 1624. We could have other devices in here as well, other Aspen boxes, maybe an IR box, and we can address multiple systems simultaneously. So here we have that command. Now toggle is done. It's already set to send the command and to process the feedback here for phantom power one status. Click OK. Let's go to phase invert and we will do the same thing here. Let's look for the phase command. There we go, phase invert, one toggle, and we're good. Click OK. And now finally let's do the slider. Double click the slider. Um, now I have a couple of ideas or actually a couple of uh, choices that I have. Uh, I can have something happen when I press the button. I can have something happen when I drag the button and have something happen when I release the button. Well, I'm going to keep simulate feedback on. And I have analog, analog join number 19. And for when, when I actually drag the slider, I want to affect input gain number one negative 10 through 60. Let's use that. Now I drag it around. Let's say I just happen to pull my finger off and it moves just slightly. Well on release I also want to issue the same command. That way I'm ensured as soon as I let go that I'll, I'll get the latest value uh, to the uh, serial join number here as well when the box issues feedback from the Aspen device. Okay now let's click OK here and Notice it shows us our thumb pad. Let's allow you to do all of the other sliders. And it should make sense. Uh, you don't have to worry about this. The only thing you need to assign is mute uh, 2, phantom power 2, phase invert 2, and so on. And it's going to be really easy to assign those. Plus, you have the source document to refer to in case um, you need to, something doesn't work quite right. Okay, great.